Greetings to everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to see you join the webinar and discuss the virtualization within Microsoft Hypervisor and VMware Hypervisor with all the available options. My name is Serge. I'm a solutions engineer here at Starwin. We have Diana with me. Uh, she is a solutions engineer as well. Uh, hello, Diana. How are you doing? Hi, Serge. Uh, doing well. How about yourself? Oh yeah, I'm doing great. So um, let's let's hit the roll. Today we are going to discuss uh, the recent trends in the IT infrastructure and compare the key points of going with either VMware or Microsoft virtualization. Uh, Diana will show you a quick demo, and we will have a question time to answer all your questions. Okay, now one uh, disputes that traditional infrastructure uh, is being in use by the companies uh, and uh, they keep running it because of the various factors. But the global trend of going virtualized um, is relevant as never before, especially with all the possible cloud options. Virtualized IT infrastructure got a number of advantages that gives a lot of freedom uh, to the systems administrators. Instead of running uh, multiple servers, uh, as described like under uh, traditional infrastructure, company or administrator can replace them with a single one or with a pair of servers and run all the applications uh, as VMs. Uh, what it gives, uh, less investments in the infrastructure, easier maintenance and management, more flexibility in provisioning all the resources and building new applications. Obviously with the recent trend, it is more and more common using the cloud infrastructure and cloud services. Checking the graph below and the forecast for 2030, uh, we can see that most probably the traditional infrastructure remains, but that will be a very few cases or companies. It's like the same as with Windows Server 2003, which is out of support, but uh, we have companies that are still running it. Uh, back to the instruments, uh, hypervisors allow us running the applications virtualized, uh, and here are the most common. So uh, VMware is running virtual virtualization from 1999 and started a rapid growth after the EMC deal, uh, but does it still dominate the market? Uh, certainly, but not because its hypervisor is better. Uh, VMware dominates uh, because of the amount of virtualization products it has. So VMware ESXi, VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion, uh, VMware Horizon, these are just a few examples of the virtualization products offered by VMware. And due to this, VMware is still the market leader in the virtualization market with an estimated market share of around uh, 70, 80%. Microsoft Hyper-V is the second most popular virtualization platform after VMware, uh, but its market share is estimated to be around like 10, 20%. Uh, vSphere 8 is the latest version of a VMware vSphere software for managing virtualized environments. It provides an integrated management platform for the VMware ESXi hypervisor, while ESXi provides a stable platform for hosting uh, virtual machines. Uh, vSphere provides the management software and tools to configure, uh, monitor, and manage virtual machines and associated resources, such as storage and network connectivity, uh, together, vSphere and ESXi provide a comprehensive solution for virtualization. Uh, back to the competitor, uh, Hyper-V within Windows Server 2022, uh, along with Microsoft Reload Cluster, allows most of the functionality provided by vSphere uh, to keep infrastructure virtualized and highly available. Unfortunately, with the recent version of Windows Server 2022 operating system, we realized that Hyper-V Server 2022 was not released, so we could not benefit a free version uh, of Hypervisor OS 
anymore. But what happened? So based on the information I found on Microsoft Tech Community, the new strategic direction is Azure Stack HCL, which seems to replace Hyper-V Server 2022, but it's not free. However, a good uh, comparison of Azure Stack HCI and uh, Windows Server Hyper-V you can find at, at the previous webinar from Starwind. Uh, with, the, um, with the previous change, it seems that Microsoft has chosen a direction going cloud and probably uh, the potential release of Windows Server 2025 may never happen. So should we still consider it as an option? Who knows, but, uh, uh, but rumors are going the way that Windows Server 2025 footprint uh, was found in vSphere 8, and it will probably be released sometime in uh, 2024. Will that have a hypervisor feature or Microsoft will keep the trend moving us to the cloud? Uh, we don't know it yet. Nevertheless, let's check what we have now and compare the main feature stack of vSphere 8 and Hyper-V within Microsoft Server uh, 2022. Here I specified the key differences between competitors that may potentially have impact on the right choice. Uh, first of all, you should check if your system is compatible with either option. Uh, bo both platforms have broad support of uh, hardware components and systems, uh, but vSphere 8 uh, got way more strict requirements. In case of suitable hardware, maximum you can get from the host in either scenario is 1024 VMs, but vSphere can offer up to 4096 uh, virtual CPUs per host. In terms of VM limitations, vSphere also offers slightly better conditions with maximum of uh, 768 vCPUs and 24 terabytes of RAM per VM. However, if we consider the maximum disk size, Hyper-V can offer 64 terabyte with HDX disk with 72 terabyte VMDK disk on vSphere side. In terms of the VM resource configuration, vSphere offers more adjustable way uh, to configure CPU and RAM. Obviously, we're not considering just a standalone hypervisor host, so scalability per cluster also matters. Uh, with a variety of licensing options, Vsphere offers uh, from 64 to 96 nodes per cluster, uh, with 64 nodes on Hyper-V. The most critical features uh, goes next. So containeriz uh, containerization, that's a mainstream form of virtualization for developers that improves resource utilization and scalability. Wisphere with Tanzu integrates the Kubernetes container orchestration platform as a native feature of vSphere. However, Docker works better with Hyper-V in both of the isolation modes. In terms of the security, both competitors offer a number of encryption op options that are relatively the same. The main difference is in the additional features. So Wisphere offers full tolerance and distributed resource scheduler. Uh, like Wisphere full tolerance that will provide a live shadow instance of the virtual machine uh, that mirrors the primary VM to prevent data loss and downtime during the outages. And the DRS, so Distributed Resource Scheduler, that spreads the virtual machine workloads across the vSphere hosts inside the cluster and monitors available resources for you. Uh, with the Hyper-V, I found a very useful the storage spaces functionality uh, that allows the creation of software rates with no third-party applications or hardware. So let's talk now about how we can manage both of the competitors. Um, so for the VMware vSphere 8, I'll start with ESXi web client that allows to manage uh, the standalone ESXi hosts uh, with version eight and recent patches of 
version 7, we got an upgraded user interface there. Uh, VMware vCenter Server is an advanced server management software that provides a centralized platform for controlling vSphere environment. In short, that is a controller VM for vSphere. So vSphere web client allows users to manage and monitor virtual machines, host and storage resources, as well as configure network settings, manage VMware high availability and distributed resource scheduler, and perform other tasks related to the virtualization management. VMware Power CLI, that's a collection of um, PowerShell modules, providing many command lets to manage a wide range of VMware products. It allows to manage SXI hosts, vSphere, and uh, VMware vSAN. Also, we should also uh, we, we can consider uh, different third-party tools that allows to monitor uh, and control uh, vSphere environment. So one of them can be like V1 uh, as as good option. Uh, if it goes to Hyper-V 2022, Windows Admin Center is being promoted uh, a lot as a reliable uh, browser-based management tool that provides a simplified interface for managing Hyper-V hosts and virtual machines. Another thing um, we are using is just a graphical interface. So that's uh, the well-known like Hyper-V manager and for a lower cluster manager that allows us to manage VMs and manage uh, the failover cluster. Uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager is a tool that should be purchased in addition, and it allows you to manage multiple Hyper-V hosts and virtual machines from a single console. It got a rich feature set, but I would recommend checking it separately. PowerShell is a command line shell that can be used to manage Hyper-V hosts and virtual machines, as well as it's good to automate certain of tasks. Uh, one of the third party tools uh, that we can consider uh, to manage our um, Hyper-V environment is uh, Starwind Command Center. That goes along with Starwind HCAs. So it combines both monitoring and management functionality uh, to not only check the health state of Hyper-V cluster, uh, and performance metrics from the convenient dashboards, but also administrate the entire Hyper-V environment, starting from uh, nodes and networks and up to VM management. I do not consider yet going to cloud uh, on full. Uh, the average monthly bill may be slightly a bit high. However, going hybrid cloud uh, makes a total sense. So both vendors have a possibility going hybrid cloud. Uh, VMware got its weak cloud foundation and Microsoft got its Azure Stack HCI. Uh, VMware Cloud Foundation is positioned as a full stack uh, software defined data center uh, platform that includes vSphere, vSAN, NSX, uh, while Azure Stack HCI is a hyper-converged infrastructure platform that runs on uh, Windows Server. So VMware Cloud Foundation can integrate with public cloud services such as VMware Cloud on AVS, while Azure Stack HCI is designed to integrate with Azure Public Cloud Services. To manage VMware Cloud, you can go with a vSphere web client, and Windows Admin Center is recommended for the Azure Stack HCI. With VMware, SXI has been licensed um, on the per socket basis. Uh, Wisphere uh, has been licensed on the fire processor basis. So VMware SXI has two versions, the free one and the paid one. What's really interesting about the SXI is that uh, the free and paid versions use the same installation media. 
So that means that with the free version, you are getting the enterprise solution with certain features uh, locked out. Uh, WeSphere licensing depends on the feature set included into the package. However, I would like to draw your attention uh, to the vSphere Essential Plus Kit that covers all the basic needs like vSphere vMotion and uh, vSphere HA. If you want to benefit uh, both uh, vSphere fault tolerance and vSphere distributed resource scheduler features, Enterprise Plus is a really good solution or option. Uh, with Hyper V licensing, we can go with um, the essential. So that's a very specific license dedicated for small um, for small businesses, and it's limited to maximum of 25 users and 50 devices. So it's restricted to single CPU servers with 10 or fewer cores, and it is the cheapest option. Um, but uh, you should check it prior to to the purchase. So. Um, Hyper-V standard license is the most popular option for businesses. It doesn't have such restrictions as essentials and got more features included into the license. So two virtual machines are licensed from the box and uh, additional VMs require like the separate licensing. Um, the data center license is the most exp expensive option and got almost no limitations. The good thing with data center is that all VMs are licensed from the box. If you want to benefit Windows System Center, uh, this license is purchased separately. So about the evaluations, VMware offers 60 days evaluation period, while Microsoft gives 180 days. Obviously like with Microsoft, you have more time to evaluate the product and decide like whether that's a good option for you or not. For the support, uh, vSphere offers um, support options to VMware only. Uh, so it, it's including like basic production and premier support. Uh, this support options provide, um, provide varying levels of support services and response times uh, with premier offering the most comprehensive support. Well, Microsoft offers uh, per case support, uh, uh, basic and standard support, uh, also that goes from Microsoft. So basic support provides 24 per seven online technical support for critical issues, um, while standard support offers more comprehensive options, um, such as like phone support or rapid response times. Another option uh, to support your Microsoft environment is MSP support. Finally, uh, another thing that made a lot of noise in the forums is a subscription licensing, which is available in vSphere 8 and not available in Hyper-V 2022. 